can at times keep the fire from rapidly moving towards flash over. This can be done while crews enter the structure to search for victims and keep the fire from moving into other occupied areas. Don't think of this as a defensive tactic. It's not. Quick yells and straight to mop the ceiling from an exterior as an attack. You are cooling the fire will otherwise be allowed to grow exponentially.
smoke and fire from the ground level window, and light smoke coming from the door. Light is always our priority. Next is limiting the fire smoke. Basement fires are dangerous for many reasons. The first thing firefighters are forced to fight them from an uphill position. This is no different than having fire below you on an intern of a mixed slope road on a brush fire. Basement fires are watch out situations and structured fires. Your uphill position puts us directly in the foreground. The questions are how do you create survivable space for victims and rescuers and limit the fire's growth when in this disadvantaged position? And how do we prevent excessive steam buildup from collapsing the neutral plant? You also recent study on basement fires provides some tactical recommendations. Your research indicates that exterior water application into the basement window will not push fire throughout the construction. Exterior water application during a basement fire will in fact improve conditions throughout the structure. The structural integrity allows for it. Exterior water application provides interior attack rooms in more tangible environments to gain access to the basement to distinguish any contact that is Now let's look at the middle study that supports this attack. Through the basement door. You put a you put a water 
Fire was going to go very fast. And the upper floor is from 550 degrees F to 1500 degrees F. It's even worse. So, when after you apply the water from the outside, you cool down the environment, you should get inside and surprise the fire as soon as possible because if you don't do anything the fire and the temperature will grow again very fast so when you start start to extinguish the fire from the outside you cool down the environment you should be prepared to get inside as fast as possible so let's see another short video of interior tech during the past the fire service has benefited from NIST and UL's research on how fires develop in enclosed structures. They have taught us about how fast fires progress and how much energy is released when modern materials burn. We have learned the importance of controlling the fire by limiting the available oxygen. This research has resulted in significant changes to how we fight fires. Like many fire departments around the country, including FDNY, Los Angeles County Fire Department is changing how we approach enclosed structure fires to be consistent with this new research. All of these changes are to prevent flashover conditions from developing. We're achieving a very old tradition of fire attack, but we don't throw water until at the scene of the fire. Now we are saying that it's okay to flow water above you into the smoke, which we know is fuel. This will cool the space around you. Also, by controlling the entry door, we limit the amount of fresh air that enters the building, thereby limiting the fire's growth. UL studies have shown this to be very effective in reducing temperatures and decreasing the potential of flash. The first arriving engine to a structure fire has a lot of work to do in a short amount of time, especially if you're at seen with a three-person crew. You're arriving with a four-person crew, one firefighter will be a cell control, the other firefighter and captain advance the line. As a door control firefighter, your job is to control the flow path of fresh air to the fire. You are trying to keep the fire ventilation limited or oxygen deprived. When the door control firefighter arrives at the entry point, the firefighter will assess the door. If the door is open, close it until the line is ready to be advanced. If the door is locked, force entry and control the access point. The firefighter assigned to door control establishes an equipment pool. This can keep the fire attack team aware of the point of entry in the event of a rapid ingress. You do this by placing the flashlight inside the door and using the tool to sound. After the fire attack team is in the structure, the door control firefighter places the flashlight inside the door closes the entry door two-thirds of the way to control the flow path. If you are a door control firefighter, you need to assist the fire attack crew by feeding the line to the door. Your hands will be on the attack line to assist with hose advancement or withdrawal, and so you know when the attack crew is flowing water. Having your hand on the line is critical. This informs you when water is flowing so you can coordinate ventilation at the door. The door control water is flowing so you can coordinate ventilation at the door. The door control firefighter will advise the fire attack crew of changing conditions. When the water is applied to the fire and steam is produced, the door control firefighter should open the door and allow the steam to escape. If the fire attack crew has to travel a distance away from the door, as the door control firefighter, you can enter the structure a distance away from the door. As the door control firefighter, you can enter the structure in order to better communicate the point of entry to your attack team. The fire attack firefighter pulls the attack line on the front door and prepares the line for entry by rick-racking the holes at the entrance. Once at the door, you call for water and don your SCBA and gloves. When the hose is charged, you bleed the line and check the nozzle pattern prior to entering the building. The nozzle pattern should be a straight stream. Before entry, check for heat by applying a short burst of water onto the upper third of the door. If the steam is produced, you know you have heat. 
next several tasks the team is critical to limiting the stroke and effectively getting inside the control of the fire. As the nozzle firefighter and the captain are ready to advance inside the door, the door control firefighter opens the door cautiously. Once the door is cracked open, the firefighter and the nozzle flows a straight stream to the ceiling to check the temperature. If the water is converted to steam and doesn't turn in the form of water droplets, this indicates high heat at the ceiling. This is a watch out and structure fire. High heat at the ceiling. Slowing the fire's progression at this point is achieved by taking a leg out of the fire triangle. When the temperature is reduced enough to allow the water droplets to return from the ceiling, the fire attacker advances the line further into the structure. Bouncing short bursts of water off the ceiling into the smoke layer should occur while the line is advanced into the building. Be careful not to flow too much water. Maintain your thermal balance by flowing enough water so the heated gases contract when cooled. Too much water can create steam that expands and collapses the usual plant. If you notice know change in conditions, flow some water to check the heat. It's about building your situational awareness inside the structure. The water in your hose line is your lifeline. It is your tool to put the fire out and to keep you safe. Use it. A little water on the machines around you almost. However, not flowing water and crawling into a flashover will destroy you and those you are attempting to save. Numerous NIAF firefighter fatality reports and recent incidents around the country are evidence of this statement being true. If a thermal imaging camera is available, the captain or any other member who has a tick should monitor the temperature from floor to ceiling. If you're arriving with a three-person engine, the captain will initiate a flashlight to the entry. As a captain, you will also bring the thermal imaging camera if it's available. As the crew approaches the door, you must keep your eyes on the smoke. Smoke conditions can indicate where the fire is located and what is burning. And even if it's open, your conditions indicate the fire is ventilation limited and wanting air to grow, limit the fire's growth by shutting the door. This is the captain's responsibility when the three-person engine company arrives. The door is locked, force entry, and control the access. After the attack line is charged, the firefighter specialist will assume the door control position until relieved by the next arriving unit. We understand that this is something new. Well, convince yourself of the value of this information by reviewing the research. And with hands on the plan, mostly in black. And lastly, make sure you get out there and practice. Review each position. Get several repetitions. And advancing that line into and structure. And if you have any questions, give us a call. This is a short video for the interior fire attack. And some information uh, here uh, might be adjusted uh, because this video is made on 2013, so it's already five or six, six years ago. And more research I've done to show that putting, putting uh, water will not collapse collapse the neutral plane. Actually, the smoke layer will always, always contract. I will show that later. So why is controlling the door so important? You can see that as long as the commander or the chief go to the fire scene, the first thing is close the door. And while the other uh, crew is prepared for the host line, First, the control door to control the air supply. Just talk about ventilation, very important for fireproof. So, like this curve, this is a tip, typical fireproof stage to the flashover and to the fully developed fire decay. So, this is a period of the typical fire. But if we control the door, we can prevent it from going flash over. Because less ventilation, it will slow down the fire growth. So it will, it might go down like this. 
but at least you will not go up if you control though because of, because the fire not grow later. No, that if there is already a lot of smoke, a lot of unburned gas inside the compartment, if the door is open, so reintroduction of fresh air, so control can prevent fresh over and also backdraft. This is very crucial. And modern fires burn very fast, three to four minutes to flash over. So we need to slow it down. And the ventilation can control the fire rules and make it grow slower. So we're limiting the air entry for the building. And we prevent the fire flash over and prevent the background just by controlling the air supply. So I will show you an example. If you do not control the door, or even worse, okay, this is a fire team. So a firefighter wants to get in, and there's a smoke. It's a incomplete combustion now. And some fires are burning out. So you can see the fire might be growing now. So this firefighter breaks the window and makes more air going inside. The fire is burning. Okay, a lot of smoke getting out. The fire is bigger now. So thank you for your help. <laughs> Okay, more windows broken. Wow, a big <laughs> fire. You see? It's a very good demonstration of how to destroy a home. <laughs> you see, they, they walk away now. <laughs> okay, it's just show. But you can see that if you don't have a, a good knowledge for firefighting, you do this kind of thing. Then, you see this part? It's growing, but it cannot grow any more faster because the ventilation is not enough. Due to the windows and the door was closed, so not sufficient air supply for the fire inside. But when someone breaks the window, more air goes in, burning, increase rapidly, and become flash over. So this is a very bad demonstration for firefighting. You should be aware of the ventilation. So what should you do instead? Don't break the window. You need to control the air supply. So control the door. Make it in the air supply. And slow down the fire food. And apply water. You control the door. You prepare the whole sky. You see the fire put some water on it, cool down the environment before you get in, and fast intervention after your first application of water. Complete the extinction immediately. And if you have the equipment of thermal image uh, camera, I will show you what, what's the equipment later. Uh, you can use that to have a better understanding of the temperature at the fire scene. So backtrack, uh, I will remind you a little, a little bit. Okay, this is backtrack. Remember, there's only some wood burning in this container. Nothing like a gasoline or nothing like a high pressure gas is burning inside, just wood burning in this container. But it can create this kind of phenomenon, like an explosion. Why? Because there's already a lot of unburned gases due to the insufficient air supply. So they have enough unburned gases. And when they open 
a small van closed the door immediately when you arrive. And this small you, you understand the situation and the group members go to prepare the whole site as soon as possible to reduce the temperature inside the enclosure. Sometimes you need to let the state out and check the nozzle before you enter it in case anything goes wrong. And pull water on the ground door to, to see if the temperature inside is, is high or not. Because you need to do some size up. You need to know about the situation going inside. This is a very quick check. So apply water in a straight, straight pattern into the city. So if the water turns to steam, meaning that there is a high temperature. So be careful. The, 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 the heat on the city might already become a flash over condition. So you cool down the fire first. You cool down the temperature in the environment before you enter. Never enter a room before you cool down the environment. So for a three people engine, a three people group crew, the captain should control the door and bring an iron or glass line and bring a thermal image camera if possible. Analyze the smoke. Then the firefighting crew first charge the hose line. Assume door control position and return to engine when relieved. Okay, I will show you what is the thermal image camera. So this is a thermal image camera that uh, you can check the temperature from the from the screen. So uh, it, it will show the temperature uh, on the on the camera, and you can have a better view through the smoke uh, from this camera. So red is very hot. Black is cold. White is hot. Yellow is hotter than, than the white. More or less like this. So first, heat can be tracked easily. You will just see the temperature. You can identify hotspots more easily than your bare eye because the smoke will, will uh, have a less visibility during the fire. So it can help to evaluate the gas. So why is hot? Red is very hot. A training is required. This is uh, not enough training. You might be needing uh, all the information inside, and there is limitation for this equipment. So, when people using this equipment, you should understand the limitations. Because first, this apparatus is is designed to de detect radiant thermal uh, emissivity. So. It's a uh, it reads the temperature by this kind of techniques. It reads the emissivity from the radiation heat. But sometimes the smoke is too thick, so a radiation heat uh, wave cannot reach. It. So they are considered consider not so reliable. But it helps you very precise. But this helps. So you need to. So you, you arrive at the fire scene. Uh, you see some fire venting out. Uh, it's under the ground, so it's a basement fire. And 
neutral fires makes evacuation and ventilation more difficult. Also, firefighters are forced to fight the fire from upward. So you need to like it, throw it down like this. It's more difficult for firefighting or rescue. So use transitional attack from the outside, just as we saw in the previous. All, uh, so what should be noticed? First, the floor path. Be careful for the wind. Because like this, in this situation, the firefighter enters the basement from the from ground floor. And usually, the floor will work like this. The cold air goes in from the lower layer and the hot layer, hot, hot smoke goes from the top, back, back side. This is very dangerous because now the cold air 